So hi everyone, this is Jasta Kid from the Achievement Squad, uh, coming at you with a 39 Days to Mars Achievement Guide. Uh, in this video, we will show you how to get the majority of the achievements, with the exceptions of those connected to timed runs. Uh, they'll be coming in a later vid video, I hope. Um, just wanted to give a shout out to Philip, the creator of the game. You did a fantastic job. Um, we really, really appreciate your hard work and effort that's gone into creating this game. Uh, very entertaining, thank you. So, there are two playthroughs in this video, one bad playthrough uh, where we net all of the achievements for everything going wrong and one good playthrough where everything goes perfectly. So here we go. So I recommend doing this as a solo playthrough for the one where you're going to fail everything. Um, now straight away you'll spawn into this house and the first puzzle that you're going to need to do is put together a map. Um, this map will require you to piece uh, to get a bit of a broken uh, piece of paper. Now to ensure that we're failing everything as we go, um, you will need to give up. So once you open the puzzle, press the B button or the circle button and then hit the give up button. Um, and this will ensure that you fail the puzzle. Now I'm not sure if that counts towards the end achievement, but I've been doing it for every part as I've been going through. Now this first puzzle requires you to piece together a map. So straight away, the first part you want to grab is the compass. So the bit with the north, east, south, west on it. You want to place that into the top left hand corner. And then there's a piece, like a small triangle that's got pins on that. You want to rotate this piece around and connect it to the bottom of the compass. And then the next part I go after. Now the earth one I've got in my hand is one that you'll need in a moment. I picked up a bit too soon. But the part you want next is the part that's got the folded corner on. Now spin that around and then connect that again to the bottom of the bit with the pins. And then you take the planet Earth, where the line is, you kind of point that downwards. And then you grab the triangle piece with the shallow curve uh, and connect that to the bottom of the planet. You then take the small uh, planet, which I think is Mars, and connect that to the very top. You then grab the part that's got the asteroids in it and then you connect the asteroids to the shallow curve and then take this dotted line, spin it around uh, and make sure it clicks in that way. And then you grab the picture of the Kraken and then that goes next to uh, the line you, set of lines you've just placed onto the map. The, then take the part for the large triangle, click it into the top uh, and then there is a piece that you've got, there's the triangle which goes into the side here and then you've got the corner piece which you just connect in, drag it to the middle and then when it pops up saying done, click the button. You did this puzzle, you want to make your way upstairs, climb the ladder and you want to head to the tea chest in the corner. Now this one, this puzzle will involve you flicking a series of switches on and padlocking them in place. So once you're in, again push the B button, select give up just to ensure that you fail the puzzle. And then once the talking's done, reinitiate the puzzle. And you want to pull down these switches and you'll see that the little bar at the top uh, fills up with power. Now your aim is to match the power bar to the little light bulb that is blinking. So you'll have to pin down a couple of these items. Now you'll see here I have a bit of a fail and I padlock the wrong piece. Um, but as you can see here, once that's padlocked in and you reach the line, reach the line, you pull the switch to the left and you'll open the box and get your hands on the top hat. Once you have the top hat, head down the stairs and you want to grab the fishing rod, head up the stairs uh, and use the fishing rod on the balcony here. And you're doing this to try and get your hands on the key that is that is hanging there. Because that's a smart place to put a key. So once you're into this one, um, now I think I tried to solve the puzzle here and then realized that I've got to back out again. So you'll see me go heading over and clicking on the give up function. We can't explore and once I've done that, again, reinitiate the puzzle as always. Now you'll need to coordinate here, now it's a little tricky, um, but spin both of the uh, items at the top clockwise to move the hook across to the key that's down into the bottom right hand corner. Uh, this can be quite fiddly, so take your time with it. And once you've hooked onto the key, wince it up a little bit, reel it back, 
and then pull it up a little bit higher. I, f I fail numerous times on here, uh, but this is there's no necessarily no linked achievements at this stage for this one. So one of the things also you'll notice as you're moving from left to right that sometimes the key will also fall down a little bit. So do everything you can just to keep cranking it upwards, uh, spinning those um, those analog sticks in counterclockwise direction. Okay, so once you have the key, uh, you want to head downstairs to the, the front door of your house. Uh, use the key on the door and that will open that one up. And you want to head over to this blinking bulb that you've got outside. Um, and that will switch on the uh, hydro hylocoscopic something or other, I'm not going to pronounce it. Um, this is a password generator. Now here we're going to not necessarily complete this puzzle to get an achievement. So. Again, as always, head in, give up, just to be ensured that you're failing at everything. And then what you want to do is you want to open up the puzzle again. But this time, so so the idea behind this puzzle is that you drop the little circle icons onto the board here and you match up to create the shape. But you don't want to put all of the circles down at this time. So just lock a few of them into place. And what you'll see around the side is these symbols will start to appear. And these are part of a passcode that you need to unlock a door outside. Now only do this so you can get the three symbols. So here I've got a reverse D, a hourglass, and what looks like a man. And you want to head over to this fire hydrant here. Now switch this fire hydrant on, and then over to, head over to the gate on the side. Now the symbols that we just had from the password generator a second ago, you want to enter the first three symbols into the correct places and then you're going to need to guess the final symbol so like so i enter the backwards d the funny shaped hourglass and the weird little man and with trial and error you have to kind of guess the last symbol on here uh, and this in doing this this will get you the skeleton key achievement so just to speed this up, I've cut this short so that you guys don't have to enjoy me every failed attempt that I make. Uh, but this will then net you the skeleton key achievement once you've solved this whatever this random number is on the end or uh, icon or whatever. So in this case, it's the two X's linked together. And then you'll get yourself the achievement skeleton key for 40 G's. Once you've done that, you want to winch yourself to the top by pulling down the rope. Uh, you have to have the cat let go of the rope every time you pull it down just to keep it going up. And once you get to the top, you want to head to the right and a rope ladder will fall down allowing you to climb aboard your ship. Up there is our spaceship, the HMS Fearful. Pieces are falling off of it as we speak. Okay, and I experience some little fun where I can't seem to climb a rope. Fantastic. So once you eventually climb to the top of the rope ladder, um, you'll net yourself an achievement, which is H in square brackets, and that's because you left the fire hydrant running as you left the area. Now from here, make your way to the very top of the rope ladder. So once you reach the top of the rope ladder, wait for Percival to land in the armchair and then you need to climb back down the rope and eventually on the screen it will give you the option of detaching the rope ladder. You want to do this and then this will set sail and you're now on your journey to Mars. Now it's worth noting from here onwards, um, all the puzzles take place at random 
uh, and the entire ship every time is randomly uh, generated. Most of the time before each puzzle, you'll need to be required to make a cup of tea or a scone. So we're going to head over to the kettle and we are going to fail at making a cup of tea. Now to do this, what you want to do, you want to put the tea bag into the cup. And then you want to pour a bunch of milk in because, my God, who would do this? Um, and then once you've poured the milk in, uh, you pour in the, the water as well to go with that. Um, and now to get an achievement here, so you have to make a bad cup of tea or fail at something, just serve a cup of hot salty tea. And you will net yourself an achievement called snag, which is for failing at something. Now, there is an achievement to um, fail at making every cup of tea or 39 cups of tea. So you can actually farm this at this point, And this is exactly what I do. You just keep pouring in hot water and then you click on the cup and you can from this point onwards just keep repeating, repeating. Now, I've cut that out so you don't have to endure it, but it takes about 20 minutes and you will be able to get the achievement for making bad tea. And then once you've made all of your bad tea, uh, you want to take the time to create a good cup of tea. So this time around, put your tea bag in, pour the hot water in. You'll need to drop in two cubes of sugar. Um, sorry, uh, one cup of uh, one cube of sugar for this one. And then pour in a bunch of milk. You want to give it a few minutes for it to, to cool down. And when it says a warm cup of tea, uh, warm milky tea then click on the icon here now this is different every time but on the little menu on the side it'll explain to you how to make the tea and they're quite straightforward little puzzles the teacups themselves so you won't always make a cup of tea sometimes it'll be a scone um, it really is just all randomly generated the whole time so this first puzzle that uh, opened up for me was the one for um, fixing the water pipe so in this case, again, straight away, push the B button and select yes, and you'll notice the screen will start going wavy because we've failed the puzzle. Now for the water puzzle, to pass it, you need to literally grab hold of the different pipes and just keep connecting them, and you want to connect it to the pop pipe that is at the top right hand side. So keep grabbing those pieces, they are randomly generated, there is no particular order to them, but you need to connect from, from left to right to solve the puzzle. It just takes a few minutes, um, but yeah, just keep picking up the pipes and keep putting them in place. Okay, so once you've actually completed this one, you'll see uh, a gray line will go across and the water will transfer from one uh, storage location to another. Now just wait a few minutes uh, and what will happen is the next puzzle will trigger. And so for me, the puzzle that triggers is the food storage location, which explodes, which means I've got to go out and get more 
food. So head up to the uh, the bell, but it won't work. But if you make your way downstairs, you'll find a set of walking sticks. These are generally near the entrance of the level where you come in. You need to grab these walking sticks as you'll need them as hooks for catching food. Once you've collected those sticks, head back up to the top uh, and you will find the diving bell where the explosion took place. And you need to head out and catch some jellyfish. Our food supply has been destroyed. We need to reprovision somehow. Okay, so once you are in the diving bell, um, you'll be able to steer it. For some reason, I have a weird bug here, uh, and I jump backwards. But hold down both triggers, and the capsule will move forward in a straight direction. Let go of one trigger. Um, so if you let go of the right trigger, it will steer you to the right. If you let go of the left trigger, it will steer you to the left. And you need to tail this jellyfish for some time, uh, and eventually you'll meet up with a, another group of jellyfish that you need to capture, because space jellyfish for dinner. Sounds great. So after a little while of following the jellyfish, eventually um, you will come across all of his friends. It takes a few minutes. And once you're there, uh, he says that the calculations, so you need to catch three in total. So the easiest way of doing this is to get the closest jellyfish. Um, and you need to hold down both um, left and right trigger to fire it. Uh, but use the single triggers just to fire uh, to steer the ship and point it into a different location. Yep. So going for the closest jellyfish is the way to go. You can hook them on the way back, but the closer they are, the easier it is and the faster it is to get this puzzle solved. That looks like a reasonable haul. So once you've caught the final jellyfish, uh, you want to hold down the left and the right trigger and you'll be brought back to the ship. It's worth noting for this one, you can't actually fail it, so yeah, you don't have to worry about failing at this one to get the achievement. With all of these fish, our hunger will be well sated. Okay, so once you're back on the ship, uh, just bide your time, wait for something else to blow up, uh, and you'll be well off on your way to the next puzzle. Okay, so for me, the next part of the ship that fails is the garden. Uh, it sprouts out everywhere. Um, but before I can actually go and uh, solve this puzzle, I need to eat or get a scone uh, from the oven. So head over to your oven and start the scone puzzle. The kitchen fire is stoked to the perfect temperature for scones. Now, to fail the scone puzzle, what you need to do is you need to take off the lid of the scone. Uh, and the first thing that you're going to need to pick up is the clotted cream. And you want to put the clotted cream on first. So pick it up from the bucket and put it onto the scone. And then you need to then grab uh, a lot of jam from the jar and then put the, the jam on top of the cream because this never makes any sense. You know, uh, as a guy from Devon, I really disagree with, you know, putting the, the jam on last because it just goes everywhere and makes a mess. Uh, and then eat it, eat the scone and look, it's scientifically proven. It's disgusting. He doesn't like it. Now you need to reinitiate the, the scone puzzle once you failed it. Um, and on the left hand side, as you can see, there is a set of instructions. Now, I find this a little bit tricky from time to time, depending on how much it's asking you to put on. In this one, I'm quite lucky because four red currants and uh, two strawberries is not tricky. But when you're asked to put on a lot of jam and butter, uh, it can be, can be quite tough. Um, but you can normally hold in the lid of the scone in place. But in this case, I don't need a lid. It's just um, 
just two strawberries and four red currants. Nice and simple. So once I've done that, head over to the left hand side, click the eat button. Again, just to reiterate, you may not get a scone puzzle. It might be a tea puzzle. It's all completely random. So once you've done that, the puzzle for the plants is actually quite tricky for me. Um, I struggled a lot with this one. So open up the plant puzzle and look down to the bottom right hand corner. You will see the rules that you need to go after. So Axiom 7 and Regulation F. Quit out to fail, but now you need to go over to the library uh, and open up the library. And you need to understand what were those rules um, that were on the screen there. So I had three specific rules to look up. So you need to find those pages and they're normally all hidden in here quite well. And once you've dug out those pages, what I recommend you do is you take a picture on your phone or you write it down somewhere in a bit of paper because this text on this paper is never the same. It's consistently changing all the time. Um, nonetheless, the puzzle isn't too hard, but it's the easiest way to remember. And, and the hardest part of the puzzle is actually remembering what it says on the paper. I also recommend that you get a good look at the, um, the different plants in the images. As you can see, there's a, like a lilac leaf down in that corner. Um, once you've found all of the, the different rules, Okay, so once you've found the rules that you need um, and you've grabbed that picture, I recommend you take the time to dig out the, the different leaves. Now, the reason why there's a bit of a funny cut in here is because I backed away from the, the, the library case. I really shouldn't have done. But take the time, look at the paper, familiarize yourself with the different types of plants that you'll find in your garden. Um, and this will make things a lot easier for you when it comes to solving the plant puzzle. So once you've got an idea of all of the plants, I recommend you take an extra few minutes in the library and you dig out all of the Morse code items as well. Now the Morse code isn't needed for the plant puzzle, uh, but it'll eventually come up in later in the game. Uh, and it's, again, it's just to save you time. You can kind of kill two birds with one stone if you pull all of the Morse code uh, items out. I think there's a grand total of five or six pages that you need to look at. Uh, but you'll need that for another puzzle that crops up later. Or vice versa. Um, you may need to do this the other way around for the plants. It just really depends on how the order of the game plays out. Now once you've done that, head back up to your plant puzzle. Uh, and then start from there. Okay, so for the garden puzzle, you need to grab the clippers that you see in the left hand side. And the aim behind it is that you've got to use that to meet the requirements and the guidelines that have been set out. Um, so one of my things was to ensure that there was an equal amount of roses as there are to holly. There are no buttercup leaves within inside the area. There are a minimum of three violets and at least five lilac leaves. So the lilac leaves are the pointy leaves the violets are the like the little three uh, petaled plants that you see. The buttercup leaves are the three pronged leaf that you can see around the area. Uh, and then holly is very familiar to everybody, but it's the spiky leaf uh, and as well as the roses. So I needed to make sure there was an equal amount of those in the garden. You can either cut the actual leaf or piece of berry or whatever it is 
um, and you can just kind of take it from there. Um, so now I don't think there's a specific requirement for failing to plant one, but I always press B and back out to the library just in case to make sure that that counts as a fail. Okay, so again, as always, wait until your next uh, explosion happens to go and find your next puzzle. So for me, the next puzzle was the O2 system who's broken or the rock pulverizer thing, which I think fuels the, the craft. Um, but before you can start the puzzle, as always, you need to go and make a cup of tea or a scone. So once you've done discussing your Stoke on Trent teapot, um, make yourself a dodgy cup of tea. So in this case, as I always do, I pour in the hot water and then I hit the cup and serve up a salty cup of tea. Once you've delivered the failed cup of tea, um, you want to kick start it again and then deliver a proper cup of tea. In this case for me, quite straightforward, just a hot tea, which is a tea bag, hot water and a sugar cube. This looks like a good cover. Once, you know, once you have your tea or scone or whatever it is, head back up to the penny farthing. Now there's an achievement that you can farm here for getting 39 rocks destroyed. So as you're going about, um, use the right trigger or left trigger to move forwards. And then using the claw, what you want to do is you want to smash the rocks that you see around you. And now for the achievement, you need to smash 39 rocks in total. And um, also here, you need to fail by running out of oxygen. Um, once you run out of oxygen, you'll respawn back into the ship. Um, but from here, you can kind of just keep farming the, the asteroids over and over again. It won't take you long to do about two to three, maybe four attempts, I think it was for me in the end. Uh, but once you smash enough of those, it's 39 in total, you will net yourself the achievement. Now I'm going to cut that short so that you guys don't have to endure that, um, but literally just keep rinsing and repeating the same pattern and you'll get it pretty quickly. So you see here, I will reinitiate the puzzle and on this attempt outwards, um, I will get myself the achievement. Now the aim of this part of the puzzle is to um, bag yourself three pieces of coal. Now, the aim here, if you want to do this successfully and quickly, is do not venture too far from the ship. And once you see a piece of coal, grab straight onto it and start making your way back to the ship and place it into this orange cloud kind of area here uh, to send it back in. Now, every time you pass a piece of coal back into the ship, you will get the oxygen refilled, meaning you don't die, which is quite handy. Uh, and then... Again, you go out and venture further uh, just to find some more some more coal. The, there are three pieces that you need to get in total. The more pieces you have, um, I find that the more asteroids you have to smash to, in the bid to get it. So the third piece of coal will take you slightly longer to find than the previous two. But again, once you've got it, head back to the ship, throw the coal in, uh, you get your oxygen refill and then make a beeline for the closest asteroids to you um, that require minimal effort and head over and smash them to find that final piece of coal. Now, once you've found that piece of coal, head back over to the ship, drop it in, and you'll be teleported back inside. Uh, and again, as always, wait for the explosion, uh, and you'll find your next puzzle. 
in this case for me, I believe it is the steam generator. But for me to use the steam generator, I need to make a scone. Um, so as always, I need to fail at making a scone. Uh, in this case, I just serve up a plain scone. So as soon as I get in, just select the option from the left hand side and serve them a dry scone with no water because it's cruel. Okay, so once you've served the bad scone or the bad tea, reinitiate the puzzle uh, and follow the recipe on the side to ensure that you get it. Uh, I think I apologize for this one because I find getting jam and butter onto a scone a little bit of a nightmare, but nonetheless, anyway. Okay, so once you've made your tea or your scone, head back up to the puzzle. Uh, so this one for me is the is the steam pop, uh, pump or steam boiler thing. Uh, and for this puzzle, again, push B, give up to fail the puzzle, um, and then restart it again. And the aim behind this puzzle is that you need to figure out which sockets do work and which sockets don't work. So start off by disentangling the the cord, uh, and the system will then drop in this thing here. I think it's for testing the connections. And um, you need to plug one end into that part and another into the other end. So and then it will give you a tick saying that it validates that the the socket is working. It's the once you validate that that one is working, it will then throw a whole bunch of other switches in. Now, the aim here is that you've got to pair off each uh, checked working plug here. So you can see here I've plugged in the fuse in the top left to the fuse in the top right. Once I've done that successfully, the bar will fill in grey and then about another 200 million of these pipes, uh, well, electrical connectors will appear in. And it's the same thing for all of them. Uh, you've got to go through and you've got to test each one, find out which one works, uh, and then connect the two working connectors together. You cannot allow the different cables to overlap. Um, it's not too challenging, it's just more time consuming, but if you just keep at it, you'll figure this out pretty quickly. Uh, once you've had all of those sockets plugged in, um, you will just continue on uh, and you will complete the puzzle. Okay, and so you guys don't have to enjoy this in its full glory. Uh, I am going to speed this up for you, but you can pretty much understand from here. Make sure there's no pipes overlapping. Identify the working connectors uh, and then plug point A to point B. Okay, so I'm going to speed this section up for you so you don't have to watch it all. Okay, so once you've figured that one out, um, you can normally get the last one in by the kind of process of elimination. Uh, but once you've got the final sockets all into place, um, you will finish the boiler puzzle. That's better. Landing on Mars with creased waistcoats would have been simply awful.
So the next puzzle for me that takes place is, I believe, is a transmission puzzle. So yeah, the communication system explodes. Uh, now the purpose behind this challenge is to send a message back to Earth. But before we can do that, as always, I believe a scone is in order. So head down to the oven, find the scone, and as always, mess it up somehow. Either make them eat a dry scone or press the give up option, uh, and then you need to put the time and effort into making a scone. Um, so over here, I head over to the left, and I make them eat a dry scone. Yum. We'll have to make another. So once you've served up the bad one, um, focus on making a good one. As always, follow the recipe in the top left hand corner. In this case, I need a tiny amount of butter uh, and no clotted cream and a single strawberry. So a nice, easy, easy one. Um, but as you can see, I have a crazy battle with a knife. But yeah, this is this is how we use knives, right? Anyway, once that's on uh, and it's ready to go, eat your scum and then make your way back up to your puzzle. Again, could be random, could be a cup of tea. This may not be the generator puzzle or the, the transmission puzzle. It could be something else. Now for this one, um, quit out, push B and then fail it as always. Uh, and once you restart that, um, you will have the option of pressing these two buttons. The button on the left will put a dot onto the screen. The button on the right will put a dash into the, the thing. So. Remember the books that we looked at, uh, book pages we looked at earlier whilst we were looking at the plants? Um, these are the same pages and you need to enter the code that is written on there to, to send a transmission in Morse code. Um, and the message always reads, Voyage progressing well and no sign of giant space monsters yet. So using the Morse code you found on the pages from the book, click on the buttons, left is for a dot, right is for a dash uh, and enter that. The Morse code itself is always randomly generated, it is never the same on any playthrough. And then once you've entered the Morse code, this will finish the puzzle. If only there was a library book where I could learn how to use this telegraph machine. I'm sure that will set their minds at ease. So for this one, uh, the next puzzle for me is the uh, ship's controls, I believe it is. Um, but before that, I need a cup of tea. So again, Kick the kickstart the tea puzzle, pour in a just a cup of hot water, trigger it, and deliver a bad tea. Like I say, this is the fastest method if you're farming the awful cup of tea achievement or morning tea achievement. Um, and once you've failed it, go about delivering a much better cup of tea. So, this one, fill it up with hot water, drop in a tea bag, and you need to add two sugar cubes to make it sweet. Uh, and then you need to let it cool down. Um, it's milky tea as well, so pour the milk in. Um, and then, yeah, as you can see, it says a cup of hot, sweet, milky tea. You just need to bide your time until it says cool, uh, and then drink that tea. Mm, this looks like a good cup of... It's the control panel board made out of parts from our local telephone. Machine. Okay, so make your way up to the controls, uh, the control panel board, uh, and again, push B, give up to fail this one. Um, and when you actually fail this one, you start having little random letters appear and symbols appear on the screen as you're actually doing the puzzle. Now, the aim behind this one is on the bottom and on the top, you've got two different types of switches. 
one is a pump the other one I've got to keep tapping the button but the symbol on the left you've got to make sure the circles hover over the symbol on the left simultaneously on both pieces of wood I think it is or a ruler or whatever uh, to unlock it and then eventually you'll throw in a bunch more switches but then you've got to take the time just to figure out which switch is now triggering the uh, the dial to move up and then keep playing make sure you match up uh, each symbol the 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 switches are random uh, and they all kind of behave in different ways some of them you have to turn them some of them you have to click the button some of them are on a timer some of them like kind of flip switches but once you've matched up all of the the symbols on both pieces of wood uh, you should progress forward Controls are back under control. So on this part, we are about to net ourselves two achievements. So eventually, after you've solved enough puzzles, around kind of the 25 to 26 day mark, you'll find these little kraken creatures, little baby krakens or specimens as the game calls them, um, will start to spawn into the area. So these little guys will start flitting around. You'll see that they start dropping off ink everywhere. Now for this achievement, do not clean up any of the ink that you see. Now head back upstairs where the swinging light is in this kind of little pool uh, and you want to grab yourself a sample net. The sample net, what you need to do is just chase after these little guys, keep swinging the net and eventually you'll catch one uh, and take it back to the, the pool. There is about nine in total I think, um, but once you've collected them all, you need to drop them off back into the, the, the vase thing, uh, or the cage or the tank. Uh, and then we're going to do a bit of rinse and repeat kind of activity. So once you've captured all of them and you're down to the last one, um, you'll need to pause the game and return to the main menu. So once you've put the last one into the tank, now don't put away the net, return to the main menu and resume solo journey. And from this point onwards, you'll be able to keep rinsing and repeating and farming the little squid. Um, now I've sped this up so that you don't have to endure m multiple farming attempts on the squid, but it takes about six attempts uh, of you returning to the main menu after capturing that last one. Uh, and then drop them all into the, the tub. Uh, and as you're going, this eventually will net you the achievement for finding all of the specimens, sorry, collecting 39 specimens in total. Uh, and I believe that achievement is called Darwin. And then once you've um, captured all of them, the remaining few, we will need to put the net away without cleaning up the ink to net yourself another achievement. Now for me, I have a bit of a bug here, um, but I want to, to kind of fix that issue because you can see where the exclamation mark is in that top left hand corner. 
that's where I need to return the net to, to finish this puzzle. But I can't get to it without cleaning up the mess that they've left. Um, so to fix that issue, using the same method, you can return back to um, the, the main menu uh, and you'll be able to resolve it. But as you can see here, I get very confused because I cannot continue forward. So for me to fix that, I had to return to the main menu. Once you've captured all of them again, head over to that bit in the corner. Do not clean up any of the black stuff that you see around the map and you'll get the sepia achievement for capturing all of the specimens without cleaning up. Once again, hold fire, wait for something to explode, ready for your next puzzle. In this case, I believe mine is the generator, uh, but before I can do that, it's time for a cup of tea or a scone, depending on how your game plays out. As always, fill the cup of tea uh, and then make a good cup of tea afterwards. That was completely unpalatable. I'm going to need another cup to wash away the taste. This looks like a good copper. The gravity generator seems to be on fire. Okay, and so for the gravity puzzle, um, you just need to plug in two of the cables. Uh, I'm just checking to see if it's going to fail. But for me, just plugging in one cable in the top topic on the right hand side and the left one was enough to fail the puzzle. Now the generator uh, puzzle itself is fairly straightforward. Using the plug that you saw at the top, what you need to do is plug it into the left or right, and it's effectively a game of matching pairs, uh, and you need to identify the matching symbol on the other side. Once you've identified that matching symbol, you need to pick the plug from the, to, to match the symbols up. So here, in this case, I plug in from 0.5 on the right hand side to 0.1 because they're the matching symbols. Uh, but I have an absolute nightmare for some reason trying to find the correct end to my cable. Because um, as the gravity generator goes off, uh, things get a little bit modeled up and things start moving around. So as you can see here, I finally find it. No, I don't. Now I find it and then I plug it into the top uh, and like always, as you can see, it doesn't fall out or fail uh, and you just need to rinse and repeat this until you've got all of the wires in place. are once again in place. So the final puzzle is a boss fight. It is a fight with a giant kraken who is probably pretty angry with you for taking the babies away from it. So to do this, 
uh, puzzle boss fight, you'll need to grab the umbrella off the side uh, and the clothes clothesline. But for this one, we're not going to try and beat the Kraken. Um, we are going to try and let it consume us. So let it hit you with its ink. Um, what you need to do to keep triggering it to fire its ink is keep smacking it like the bad Kraken it is. Bad Kraken. Uh, and then once the ink hits you, uh, eventually the screen will go completely black and the Kraken will eat the ship and yourselves and Percival uh, and you will be inside the Kraken. But at the same time, you'll bag yourself an achievement for 60 Gs for getting eaten by the Kraken alive. So, as you can see, there it is. Terrible pestilence get eaten by the giant space kraken. Now, once you're inside the kraken, you'll need to solve the puzzle to get you out of the kraken. Um, it's pitch black to begin with, so just keep pacing backwards and forwards. You can't go off the side of the screen or anything, but eventually you will find the space shuttle, uh, the one that is normally at the bottom of the ship that you would use to escape in a scenario or kind of get down to the planet. Uh, if you've done a bit of exploring, they'll tell you it's not incredibly safe. There we go. So here we go. We've found that one. Now you'll need to search for a couple of parts to fix it. So head over to the right uh, and you will find uh, a slimy rock. Take that back to the, the ship um, and put that onto the, the ship itself. Head back to the right and you will find another item. Uh, sorry, it's in this kind of stomachy bit area, which is a rusty bed spring. Take that back to the, the shuttle um, to repair it. And then from here, head to the left and stay to the left for a little bit. And then a shoe, you'll find a lost leather shoe. Use that on the ship itself and then take a far right. Keep going all the way to the right and you will find a ball of phlegm in this kind of little appendix area. Take that back to the ship and you will use that as glue which is pretty damn gross. Uh, after doing this, uh, you'll be able to board the escape shuttle uh, and escape from the insides of the giant Kraken. We're ready to debark from the Kraken and descend to Mars. After you've managed to escape, you'll be in your little shuttle going down, which will have a little jet propulsion system and you'll be able to turn it left and right. But we're not going to try and land safely. Just keep smashing into all of the asteroids on the way down to speed things up. Um, and it's another failing point in the game. But keep crashing into everything. Once your screen goes too far cracked, you will eventually explode. Uh, and you will crash land on the surface of Mars. This will net you an achievement for crash landing on Mars. Um, and if you've been following this guide all the way through, now like I said, all of the puzzles are random, but it gives you an idea of how this kind of works. If you've been following this guide, you will net yourself an achievement for failing on absolutely everything on Mars. The uh, 39 days to Mars. The only thing that you don't need to do is fail on the final cup of tea. Once you've then grabbed the rug from the right hand side, head to the left, you'll find a teapot. Grab that teapot and make yourself the final cup of tea of the game. Uh, and after you've n made that cup of tea, you will net yourself the achievement Nemo. Um, and that is the single player achievement for completing it solo. Now this game has a co-op playthrough. Um, now I intend to do a co-op playthrough uh, with Pushkin. And we will be getting a perfect run through in this one in which we will not fail at the, of the, the actions or the puzzles. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we'll post the appropriate links below for this one. I've been looking forward to this cup of tea for 39 days. It was worth the wait.
So once you've done your um, first playthrough solo, where you fail this completely, uh, I recommend that you take a second playthrough and co-op and yeah, buddy up with somebody and go from start to finish to the game. Uh, and in this playthrough, aim to get everything done perfectly without failing. Um, key bit of advice with this is just take your time, pace yourselves, uh, and you should be able to get through it pretty quickly. Um, yep, just strongly recommend doing it as a with a co-op partner uh, as opposed to doing it in solo for the perfect run through because the it's just generally easier to manage when you've got somebody helping you out. There's an ink spill dripping down the side of the dresser and some Okay, so the first puzzle that you want to tackle is the is the map puzzle, which is straight away from the beginning. Just grab the title, drag it to the top of the page, uh, and as previously we did, grab all of the relevant pieces, working your way from the top hand left left hand corner of the map. So starting with the north, east, south, west compass, uh, and then moving all of the pieces around, um, spinning them about, uh, and then connecting them together to create the map. That looks good enough. We can sort out the details on the way. I store my hats in this old tea So once you've done the map puzzle downstairs, head upstairs and go to the tea chest uh, and initiate the puzzle for the, the lights. Um, you don't, I don't think you can fail this puzzle. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, just identify which switches you've got to pull uh, and then padlock the appropriate uh, switch in place. Once you've done that, uh, head up to the top and pull the switch to the left to unlock the chest. It's my favorite top hat. It's a fishing so once you have the top hat out of the, the safe, head up to the top, uh, downstairs, sorry, grab the fishing pole and then back upstairs to initiate the key fishing puzzle uh, once again. So it's worth noting, you can drop the key in this um, and you cannot fail. Um, so it doesn't count as a fail if you drop the key. So you can drop it as many times as you like in this point. Um, it is worth noting though, with some of the later puzzles, if you fail and make a mistake, you will need to exit the game and you will need to restart from the very beginning.
an ornate key made out of cast iron. My hair stands on end when I get too close. So once you have the key uh, and you've unlocked the front door, you'll need to do the uh, password generator. Um, for this one, you I don't think again I don't think you can fail it but it's a case of getting the right beads into place uh, like before and it will reveal the password on the icons around the side of the computer screen uh, once you've revealed those either grab a picture write it down memorize it um, in this one sorry in the previous playthrough we kind of cut a corner and did the skeleton skeleton key achievement um, but in this one, just to make things easier for yourself and save time, solve the puzzle completely uh, and it will reveal to you the full passcode needed to open the gate. I'm sure these symbols have a significant meaning. Maybe I should have written them down. Beyond this point is the secured embarkation zone for our cutting edge technological marvel. So once you have the password, head over to the gate, enter the codes um, that you got from the password generator uh, and click accept to unlock the gate. Uh, once you've unlocked that, use the, the winch. So as before, pull the winch up and down uh, and yep, head up on to the HMS Fearless, fearful. Up there is our spaceship, the HMS Fearful. Pieces are falling off of it as we speak. Our ship in low Earth orbit, but it's still a long way up. Frankly, I'm surprised we could find a rope ladder this long. So once you are on the ship, uh, have one character hold fire at the bottom. Um, the other one can explore, um, and you'll be given the opportunity of removing the rope ladder from the bottom. Once you've moved it, this will set sail, and you will be on your way to Mars. Now, from here onwards, as before, each puzzle uh, occurs in a random order. There is no specific order. It so happens with this one, my first puzzle to uh, arrive is the one that you need to go and collect fresh coal for. Um, well, to begin with, that starts off with you going to get a cup of tea or a scone. Uh, really depends on how the game generates itself. Uh, and once you've got your tea and your scone, head back to your puzzle. This looks like a good cover. Okay, so once you've got your cup of tea or scone uh, and you head back to the bike, um, you'll get an opportunity here to get an achievement or a trophy. Uh, and that achievement trophy requires you to collect all of the pieces of coal in a single sitting. And so have your partner. Uh, swing the, the claw around or the person drive the bike. Um, the, the general advice I give you is stay as close to the ship as possible to make this as quickly as possible. Uh, as, sorry, as quick as possible. Um, one thing I'd advise for the person riding the bike, um, do not pedal and turn at the same time. You're better off stopping and turning um, yeah, and stay generally quite close to the, to the ship. There is a pattern when, with the rocks, um, so for your first piece of coal, uh, you obtain it after breaking two asteroids. For the second piece of coal, you'll need to break three asteroids, and for the third, it is a case of breaking four asteroids. So, 
general advice, don't wander too far. Um, and once you've collected all of the pieces of coal, um, you will unlock the achievement once you return to the ship. It's also worth noting that you can fail this if you run out of oxygen. So you want to do everything as quickly as possible. So like I say, again, stay close to the ship and that should be fairly straightforward enough for you to do. Um, if you run out of oxygen, that also counts as a fail and you will, re need, re you will need to restart the, uh, the game. So as you can see here, we get our final piece of coal in, uh, and once we've uh, landed back in, we'll unlock the achievement Newcastle for 20G. So once you've done that, again, wait around for your next puzzle. Um, again, it's all randomly generated. In this one, we have the issue with the food tank. So for this one, it's just a case of head over to the, uh, to the diving bell, inspect it, head back towards the entrance of the level, grab the spears, or walking sticks in this case, uh, and head back up. Now, you can't actually fail this one, um, so there's nothing to worry about here. Just follow the jellyfish till you reach the school, uh, and once you reach the school, um, both of you have to push down A or X to fire out a walking stick and spear a jellyfish. One thing we noticed here as well, the actual speech bubbles block you from going up. But hey, just wait for them to disappear and you can move on forward. If we follow that fish, it should lead us to a whole school of them. By my calculations, three fish should be enough food to sustain us for the rest of the voyage. down, only two more fish to catch. One more fish and we'll have enough food to last until Mars. That looks like a reasonable haul. Now we can head back to the ship. With all of these fish, our hunger will be well sated. It's almost time for afternoon tea. This will have to wait until after I've had a cuppa. It's a special cube teapot that won't spill in even the roughest solar storm.
This looks like a good cover. The gravity generator seems to be on fire. Okay, so for this one, uh, you can fail this one. So the gravity generator can be failed. Um, one piece of advice I can give is one person plugs the piece in at the top, the other one works on the wires at the bottom. But to avoid you making mistakes, the person controlling the top plug just kind of stays in the location when they find the duplicate on the other side. Um, so you can see here, uh, my co-op partner is holding the item in place at point one. So Pushkin is holding that into place. Uh, and I just go and connect and wait for Pushkin to move her pointer out the way. Uh, and then I plug directly in straight away. Once you've got the fourth cable into place, you can pretty much figure out by process of elimination what you've got to do after that. Okay, so following that method, you should minimize the chances of making mistakes, um, and that should clear that puzzle for you. I'm awfully peckish. This is going to have to wait until after I've had a. The kitchen fire is stoked to the perfect temperature for scones. The perfect scone. We promised to send a telegraph to the Royal Society of Chartered Explorers. Unfortunately, I don't know telegraph code. I don't actually know what we just said. If only there was a book in this ship's library. The books in the ship's library are looking the worst for wear. After okay, the last so once storm. you get one of the the, the garden puzzle or the uh, the telegram puzzle, um, it was sort of required you to come across the library and again sort out the pages, uh, just to kind of reiterate reiterate what I said earlier on in the video. Um, it's a good idea for you to get all of the um, the documents for the Morse code into one single thing and grab a photograph on your phone or take a minute just to pause and kind of write it down um yep but at the same time once you've got hold of the the morse code items it's probably worth taking a few extra minutes whilst you're here to save some time off of the puzzles to get the uh the information around the plants so the regulations um the the rule to the regu uh, regulation thing the um Aximon and the guideline. So again, once you've got your screenshot or your photo of the of the Morse code um, or vice versa, grab the the sheets that kind of explain either the the, the garden puzzle or the the Morse code puzzle and kill two birds with one stone in effect.
the books have to be left in the library, because Albert still hasn't paid his overdue fine. Okay, so it's worth noting with the Morse code puzzle, if you make a mistake, um, you will need to click that X button at the top. I don't think this counts as a failure, um, but just be careful as you're doing this to not spit out the wrong message non-intentionally. But use the, the notes that you took earlier and or the, the photographs. Um, it always spells out in this order, uh, voyage progressing well, um, no sign of giant space monster yet. Um, so using the photographs you are uh, you took earlier or the, the notes you took earlier, just take the time, enter each one one by one. Once you've entered it correctly, uh, the, the paper will clip. If you entered it incorrectly, everything will convert to X's. But this one, fairly straightforward. Um, it's not too much to worry about. I'm sure that will set their minds at ease. I'm awfully peckish. This is going to have to wait until after I've had a scone. There's a roaring fire that Albert is going to try and cook his scones in. We've made the perfect scone. I think the ship's garden might be a little overgrown. Okay, so for the plant puzzle, um, this is a pretty tricky one to fail. Um, so if you make any form of mistake where you cut off too much or you, you didn't mean to cut something off, um, that watering can down in the bottom will reset the puzzle. So if you grab the watering can, um, you can literally reset the puzzle by pouring water over the plant pot just to just to fix the issue. Okay. Um, once again, use the notes that you've got um, that you took from the pictures, that sort of stuff. Pause the game, take a moment to read through it. Just try not to rush it because that will result in mistakes. Um, but yeah, fairly straightforward. Once you've figured it out, just take the time, make sure you clip the correct things, and then you should be able to clear the puzzle pretty quickly. I'm 
sure we've got a gardening book on board somewhere, but I can't be bothered finding it. garden is looking perfectly refined. It's almost time for afternoon tea. This will have to wait until after I've had a cuppa. This looks like a good cover. Okay, so for the control puzzle, um, there is actually a an achievement associated with this one, uh, and the achievement is to fix the um, the broken controls the very first time without failing. Now you can actually fail this. So if you look to the left, you see a brick that is on a kind of winch, which is getting slowly lowered down. Um, you can see at the the bottom there is an exclamation mark. Once the brick has passed that line, uh, this will automatically fail the puzzle. Um, so your aim here is to keep that brick held up by matching the symbols on the two rulers by using the different switches. Um, just take your time. Um, you shouldn't fail it or just don't quit out because um, otherwise it will void the, uh, the achievement. But once you've matched all the symbols, you will get an achievement for fixing the controls panel on the first attempt. Okay, so as you come to the end here, um, and I've completed the puzzle the first time, I unlock the achievement switchboard for 20G. Uh, or if you're on a PlayStation, this will be a trophy. It's almost time for Levensies. This will have to wait until after I've had a scone.
We've made the perfect scone. Without any steam from the boiler, we'll never be able to iron our waistcoats. Okay, and for the uh, steam puzzle, um, the only way you can fail this one is by quitting out. So, in this case, it's just a case of detangle the cables. Once the device is brought into you, plug it in uh, and then plug point A to point B uh, and you'll get a little tick box to say if that's working. Once you've got that confirmed, a whole bunch of other switches will load in. You need to identify the second checkbox, the one so here, we find the second tick box here and you want to plug point A to point B uh, and you need to reach and repeat this for each wire. Uh, once you straighten out that wire and the power runs through for the first time, um, a whole bunch of other wires will spawn in and you need to read and repeat. So effectively you need to find the working plug and partner those two up together. Um, yep, you can fail this one by, um, by exiting um, or clicking the give up option. That's better. Landing on Mars with creased waistcoats would have been simply awful. The pocket guide to space creatures suggests capture. Okay, so there's another achievement opportunity here. Uh, when the baby Kraken show up, um, you need to head around. Uh, player two is gonna go around with a squirty gun full of squid ink be gone. Um, and player two needs to ensure that this is, um, that all of the squid ink is cleaned up. So first of all, with player one, focus on capturing all the little uh, Kraken um, from around the area uh, and then taking them back to the tank. Once you have collected all of the Kraken, the baby Kraken, player two is then to go around and clean up 
uh, effectively after the Kraken. So walking around, squirting the uh, the black spots with the with the water pistol, um, and it knocks all of the the black gunky stuff off of the screen. Okay, um, it's worth taking an extra bit of time. So once you've got all of the Kraken caught, um, just allow the player to to kind of thoroughly check the ship to make sure everything is gone. tank is full of baby space kraken. Okay, so it takes a few minutes, but as the area generally gets quite clear um, and all the ink is gone once you've done that you need to head back up to the area where the squid are being contained as you can see here Pushkin gets all of the ink with the squid ink be gone we make our way back up to the area where the squid are being held now keep an eye out because sometimes you see these little tiny blots on the screen that you see here which are actually ink uh, also once you've done that you may want to take a, a chance to double check and make sure the area is clear. But providing that you've got them all, put the, the bottle back uh, and you'll let the achievement 20G squid ink be gone. So cleaning up after all of the specimens. It's almost time for our... This looks like a good cover. So last puzzle for me was the water tank. Uh, and for this one, you've got an achievement related to it for completing on the first try. Uh, general advice that I can give you here is um, make sure you keep using the pieces up to make sure new parts are getting thrown out quite regularly. Um, if you stop using the pieces, um, they just kind of, it, everything seems to kind of slow down a little bit. Okay, but take your time, pace yourself, make sure the water tank on the left hand side does not empty, uh, but establish a connection from one tank to the other by using these pipes and placing them onto, uh, on, onto the end of each pipe altogether. And once you've done that, this takes a little while, this puzzle, because all of the items that it's throwing out are completely randomly generated. But once you've got all of the pieces in place and established from a connection from point A to B, the water will run over, uh, and if you do this on your first try, you will net the achievement. So as you can see here, we successfully completed the, the pipe uh, and once we get out, we'll unlock the achievement for fixing the uh, boiler on the first try. It's 20G uh, for, uh, and it's called duct tape. Uh, it's a, it will be a trophy if you're on the PS4. Now, here is the final kind of boss fight for the game. It's the Kraken. 
Um, for this one, you'll need to make sure that you do not fail, you do not get eaten by the Kraken. Um, and the way to do that is to make sure you don't get covered in ink. Now, the method we found that works best for this, um, person goes out with the umbrella, the other individual is to pull back the person that is out smacking the badly behaved Kraken, um, just so that they've got enough time to um, open up their umbrella. So by pressing down the A button, or X if you're on PlayStation, you will open the umbrella, protecting you from the shot from the Kraken. Um, you need to avoid as many as possible. I think it's a count of four or five shots uh, and you will fail. Um, but just take your time, pace yourselves. No, there's no particular rush, uh, but you should take down the Kraken pretty quickly. Uh, now, one thing we didn't know at this point, but the person who is responsible for the, the cable actually has the ability to adjust your height to move you higher and to make you go lower. Um, we were not aware of this. We were kind of just floating out, being pulled back, and then, and then smacking the Kraken. Anyway, once you've cleared off all the tentacles, you'll land yourself an achievement for beating the Kraken um, yeah, before it, uh, before it devours you. So once you've beaten the Kraken, uh, an achievement will pop um, for 60G called Artitoothis, I think, but for defeating the giant space Kraken. Once you defeat the Kraken, um, this is the end of the, the game near enough. Um, the next step is to get to Mars. So from here, make your way down to the bottom uh, into your escape shuttle, which is the final kind of major challenge, I would say, uh, apart from the last cup of tea. Um, now, I strongly recommend with this one, just really take your time, um, because if you go too fast, you fall too fast, um, you will hit the asteroids on the way down and you will explode. Um, it is faster just to, to fall and crash and get to the moon quicker, but if you want to unlock the perfectionist achievement, um, you need to kind of do this perfectly. So. Be over generous with the thruster um, and make sure you steer your way through those rocks altogether. Um, just take your time, communicate with your, your, your co-op partner, but just more importantly, pace yourself. There is no immediate rush to get to the bottom. Admire the, the asteroid doing its funky thing uh, and then take your time, make sure you get down to Mars safely.
The hatch only opens from the outside. I think we're stuck in here. Okay, so once you've landed on Mars safely, you will unlock the uh, the Sojourner achievement, uh, which is for 60G um, or a trophy if you're on PlayStation um, for landing on the planet safely. Once you're down, your final puzzle is to make yourself a cup of tea. Um, so head to the left, grab the teapot. Head to the right, grab the the picnic rug, and just in the middle here, set up camp uh, and make your final cup of tea. Now. Once you've made that cup of tea, it's pretty much done from here. Um, you should unlock the achievement for completing every puzzle without failing, uh, as well as the achievement for uh, playing through the game in one sitting and the achievement connected to doing the game in co-op. So once you've completed that cup of tea, so once it's warm and milky, in my case, like I say, it's always randomized, you'll see a whole bunch of achievements start to pop. I've been looking forward to this cup of tea for So after making your final cup of tea, this will bag you the final remaining achievements for the good playthrough. Uh, so you get Aaron Axe, which is the co-op achievement trophy. And then you will also unlock the Pain Sailing uh, achievement for 140G, which is a rare achievement. Uh, and that's for completing every, uh, every puzzle in the game without failing. Um, so this should get you the majority of the achievements in the game. Um, I'm going to be focusing on over the next few days the speedrun achievements. Um, they are not as straightforward as we think. I'm able to do the uh, 45 minute one, sorry, the 50 minute speedrun in 45 minutes, but trying to work out how to do the rest of them. But watch this space uh, and you will see these video guides coming soon. So if you found this guide useful, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and happy achievement hunting.